My Lords, I would, with the permission of the House, like to repeat the statement that was made by the Secretary of State in the House of Commons today. With permission, Mr Speaker, I would like to make a statement on the latest progress following the tragic fire at Grenfell Tower 12 weeks ago. Over the summer, the Prime Minister, the Housing Minister, the Minister for Policing and Fire and myself have been meeting with the people of North Kensington to make sure their concerns are being listened to and, more importantly, acted upon. As a result, the, the, Grenfell, Tower, uh, the Grenfell Recovery Task Force has been appointed and started work. The process of removing control of properties from the Tenant Management Organisation has begun. The, rem the remit of the public inquiry has been set. A temporary school has been built. Work is underway on the scaffolding that will surround the tower. And I would like to pay particular tribute to the incredible team recovering and identifying the remains of those who died. They are doing an exceptionally difficult job in the most trying of circumstances. So far, they have identified 57 victims, hopefully bringing some measure of comfort to their loved ones. Obviously, we would all like to see the process completed as quickly as possible. But I'm sure honourable members appreciate the need for both accuracy and dignity as well as speed. My statement today is going to focus on two areas the House has previously shown particular interest in rehousing of residents and our building safety programme. However, I will be happy to answer as many questions as I can, not just on these topics, but as many areas as I can cover. And my door is always open to anyone who wants to discuss the issues in greater detail. Rehousing. 150 homes were lost to the fire. A number of households have said that they would like to be rehoused separately. As a result, there are currently 196 households from Grenfell Tower and Grenfell Walk in need of a new home. Everyone who was ready to engage with the process was offered a temporary home within three weeks of the disaster. 61 households have accepted an offer and 29 have moved in. 153 households, including all but two of those who suffered a bereavement, have had a face-to-face -face meeting with the team responsible for offering a choice of permanent homes. 164 households have used the online allocation system to look at what permanent accommodation is available. 127 have expressed an interest in one or more properties. Viewings are continuing this week. So far, 10 households have accepted offers and two have moved in. 21 households that accepted offers on temporary accommodation with housing associations have asked for their tenancies to be made permanent. This is entirely fair and the borough of Kensington and Chelsea is working to make it happen. The number of people who have moved into temporary or permanent homes continues to rise, but I know the overall total is still low. One reason for the low take-up of temporary home offers is that some residents simply don't want to move twice and would prefer to stay where they are until a permanent home becomes available. Meanwhile, residents who have accepted an offer of a permanent home have been given the opportunity to make choices about furniture and so on before they move in. That obviously takes a little time too. But we're talking about people's homes and lives here. What matters to us isn't ticking boxes, but working at a pace that suits the needs and circumstances of individual residents. We don't want to rush anyone. That's why, at the request of residents, the Council extended the expressions of interest period for permanent homes. I don't want to see anyone living in emergency accommodation for any longer than necessary. But nor do I want to see families forced to move or make snap decisions simply so I have better numbers to report at the dispatch box. Testing and building safety. Of course, the issues raised by Grenfell extend well beyond Kensington. Across England, there are 173 social housing builders, buildings that are over 80 metres tall and clad with some form of aluminium composite material, or ACM. In late July, the building research establishment began a series of large-scale fire safety tests on ACM cladding systems, comprising both the visible cladding and the internal insulation. The aim was to establish whether each system, when properly fitted, complied with the relevant building regulations guidance, BR135. Three of the seven cladding systems tested were found to meet the criteria set out in BR135. The other four fell short of what was required. The cladding systems that passed the tests are in use on eight social housing towers. Systems that failed are in use on 165. 
The owners of affected buildings have been given detailed advice drawn up by our independent expert advisory panel. This covers steps to ensure the safety of residents, including, where necessary, removal of cladding. We've also been holding weekly update calls with local authorities, housing associations and other building owner groups. We have today published further advice that brings together all the results and the views of the expert panel on the implications for building owners. We will shortly be meeting with local authorities and housing associations to discuss next steps. This will include the process by which we will ensure remedial work is carried out. Since June, we have made the BRE tests available to all private residential building owners. While 89 buildings in England have tested their cladding through those facilities, I continue to urge all private owners of similar blocks to submit samples for testing. I have also asked housing authorities to ensure the same steps are taken for all private sector residential tower blocks in their areas, and to collect data so that we understand the scale of the issue and track remedial action. Inspections carried out since the fire have also highlighted other safety issues relating to building design. For example, structural engineers studying Southwark's Ledbury estate said that strengthening work may be needed on blocks constructed using the concrete panel system that in 1968 failed with devastating effect at Ronan Point. They also raised concerns about cracks that appeared cosmetic but could compromise fire safety compartmentation. We have been in contact with Southwark Council and the engineers to discuss the issues and have engaged the Standing Committee on Structural Safety to advise on their implications. Meanwhile, all local authorities that own similar buildings have been advised to review their designs and check whether any strengthening work was properly carried out. Separately, the British Board of Agrimont has told us that, based on their investigations following incidents in Glasgow, some cladding systems may be designed and installed in such a way that they could fail in strong winds. We're not aware of any injuries caused by this kind of failure. However, we're taking advice from the expert panel and have written to building control bodies to draw their attention to the issues raised. The wider issues of competence and certification will also be fed into Dame Judith Hackett's review of building safety, the terms of reference for, for which were announced last week. Finally, I've also established an industry response group which will help the sectors required to improve building safety to coordinate their efforts. Mr Speaker, for all the work being done, nothing can match the strength and determination shown by the people of North Kensington. We saw it in the initial response. We've seen it in the dignity and courage shown by survivors. We saw it in the deeply moving scenes at this year's Notting Hill Carnival. For me, the biggest sign that the people of Kensington will not be beaten was the amazing results achieved by local children in their GCSEs and A-levels. I'm thinking particularly of a remarkable young woman named Inez Alves. Just 16 years old, her family lost their home in the fire, but she still received a string of top grades. That included an A in chemistry, despite Inez sitting the examination just hours after fleeing the burning tower. Inez is due to start her A-levels this month. I wish her all the best. And her achievement should be an inspiration to us all. If a teenage schoolgirl who has suffered unimaginable trauma can do something so incredible, we in this House have no excuse for failing to do everything possible to support the victims of Grenfell and to ensure such a tragedy never happens again. I hope all honourable members would, will join me in doing just that. Yeah. My Lord, so I make my usual declarations in your Lordship's house as a elected councillor and a vice president of the local government association. I'd also like to thank the noble Lord, Lord Bourne of Eversworth, for repeating the statement made by his right honourable friend, the Secretary of State for Communities and Local Government in the other place earlier today, and also for circulating the update for members of your Lordship's House during the recess. It is nearly three months since the awful tragic events on the 14th of June 2017 at Grenfell Tower. The whole nation was shocked by this terrible fire and we support the efforts to get to the bottom of what happened, to hold, to hold those responsible to account and to do what is needed to make sure it doesn't happen again. And I pay tribute to the emergency services, the fire brigade, the police, the ambulance services and the NHS. The whole range of public sector workers from local and national government working on the ground 
They also deserve our thanks for the work they have done and continue to do. As do the voluntary sector, the faith communities, the volunteers and the local community who stepped in when the initial response from Kensington and Chelsea Council was found to be woefully inadequate and not fit for purpose. I thank each and every one of them. But as I've said before, there's not one group of heroes and another group of public sector workers that in the past have been attacked unfairly. If you look back at some of the comments made by the Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson when he was Mayor of London in respect of firefighters, the only words to describe them are deeply regrettable and shameful, and the time for an apology has surely come. Turning to the issue of rehousing, as addressed in the statement, I agree with Orborn that while the overall number of people moving into new homes continues to rise, the overall total is still slow. I accept that we need to allow residents to make the decisions they need to make in their own time. And we're talking about people's homes and people's lives and people who have been traumatised and lost loved ones. I do recall over the recess seeing a number of television news reports that contained interviews with former residents of Grenfell Tower, and they were not always happy with how they have been treated in the allocation process. Can the noble Lord give an absolute assurance and undertaking that no one will be forced to accept a property that they do not deem suitable and that no one in any way will be limited in the number of offers they will be allowed to consider for permanent accommodation? Moving on to the testing and fire and safety of buildings, the information regarding the number of buildings and the forms of aluminium cladding that has failed the testing process is welcome to understand the seriousness and how widespread the problem is. Though there is nothing in the statement about the funding of the costs for remedial safety works, I would hope the Noble Lord can update us when he responds, as the potential costs for this essential safety work could run into millions and millions of pounds, and local authorities are going to find themselves in extreme difficulties if the Government are not going to provide funding assistance. The Noble Lord also highlighted other safety works made specific re re reference to the Lebri estate in Southwark, a place I am very familiar with. Can the Noble Lord or Bourne give us further information in respect of timescales for these urgent investigations to be carried out? Equally, it is disturbing to learn that some of the cladding systems could fail in strong winds. There is a potential for serious injury or loss of life if it was the case that cladding failed in strong winds and struck people and property. With these two new revelations today, I hope the Noble Lord will agree to keep the House informed of the urgent action the Department is taking, as failure of either the structure or the cladding could have devastating consequences, and the Department is fully aware of these serious problems. Can the Noble Lord also tell the House what work has been done to highlight other buildings that could have similar problems with construction or cladding, such as private housing or offices? Although not in the statement, it would be helpful if the Noble Lord could address in his response or by letter what the present position is in respect of the distribution of funds to residents that have been raised either through public donation or direct from the Government. As again I recall in the summer seeing news reports where concern was expressed about the time taken to release funds to those in need. In conclusion, I join with the Noble Lord in paying tribute to the survivors of Grandfell Tower and the people of North Kensington, and the actually exam results by Innes Alvarez and the other children in the area. The inspiration to us all. My Lords, I remind the House that I am the Vice President of the Local Government Association, and can I too thank the Minister for uh, his update uh, now and also during the uh, recess. Uh, as the uh, statement says, there is no excuse for failing to do everything possible to support the victims of Grenfell and to ensure such a tragedy never happens again. So let me first address the issue of supporting the victims. The statement says that there are 196 households in need of a home, that 10 households have accepted offers of permanent accommodation and two have moved in. That implies that there are 194 households who have not moved in to permanent accommodation. And I wonder what exercise the Department has done uh, which the Minister can inform us of as to how long it is going to be to rehouse all those 196 households who are in need of rehousing um, in permanent accommodation. 
And I just noticed the one sentence in the minister's statement in which he says that 127 households have expressed an interest in one or more properties. But of course what it doesn't tell you is how many properties there are actually to be allocated. And I think it is very important now that these facts are clarified. How many properties have Kensington and Chelsea got for permanent accommodation and how many are forecast to become available over the next 12 months? I think it would help. And the context, of course, as was, uh, 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 my lords, was, uh, was, was laid fairly starkly um, uh, during the recess when we were told that Kensington and Chelsea Borough has 1,652 unoccupied properties. And um, uh, uh, that is in the private sector. Uh, and I think that the government is going to have to look at ways in which it can give local authorities greater powers over empty dwelling management orders. Because that figure of 1,652, when many residents of Kensington and Chelsea are homeless, seems to me to be unacceptable. And therefore, should we not have increased council tax surcharges on empty homes of at least 200%, conceivably 300%, and a requirement for all local authorities to have an empty homes management policy uh, for homes which have been empty for more than uh, one year. I want to welcome the establishment of the independent review of building regulations. It reflects concerns that have been expressed uh, on a number of occasions in uh, uh, this chamber. And it also reflects the concerns of many social housing tenants in high-rise blocks. Um, uh, some of those who have been part of current testing and others are in blocks which uh, are not part of current <coughs> testing, but are concerned, for example, about why their high-rise blocks don't have sprinklers. And I think that this issue um, uh, uh, does need to be addressed. Um, and I'm very glad that the independent review of uh, building regulations has been um, um, established. Now, my lords, the, uh, 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 the, uh, the judge in charge of the, uh, who, who, who is leading the uh, public inquiry, Sir Martin Warbick, uh, has clarified uh, one issue about whether he, he, he wishes to uh, look at social housing policy. And he suggested to the Prime Minister that uh, he could not do that because he wanted to focus clearly on the, the issues that uh, uh, have now been defined around the fire um, uh, itself, um, what led to it and the uh, uh, response in the aftermath. But it does seem to me, and indeed the Prime Minister's letter uh, to Sir Martin on the 15th of August indicates that um, the government is going to do a review of social housing policy. So I don't think I have misunderstood what is being said, but I do think it would help enormously if the minister could say a bit more about what is actually planned there. Because at some point the government has to come back with a response to the white paper, presumably uh, this autumn, and presumably it will reflect uh, the Prime Minister's promise. Could you ask the Minister two other brief questions? The first relates to the timing of uh, each of the inquiries. <coughs> we have a public inquiry. We have an independent review of building regulations. We have, of course, the police investigation. And we have the government's response to the white paper. And I am not clear how those four different strands are being brought together uh, to avoid um, uh, 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 different inquiries. Uh, cutting across each other um, unnecessarily and ensuring that the <clears throat> urgent outcomes that are needed, particularly in relation to this catastrophic failure of building control, um, are actually being delivered. So anything the Minister can say about how that is to be brought together, I think, would be helpful. And uh, uh, the noble Lord Lord Candidate of Southwark asked the Minister, and I'm to agree with him, about the question of money. Because the government needs to be very clear very soon what it is it is going to fund and what it is that it thinks local authorities are going to be uh, um, uh, funding. At the end of July, it was reported that 82 blocks um, had used the combination of materials of which 47 are owned or maintained by local authorities. By implication, of course, 
Some 35 are not owned by um, uh, local authorities. Some of those are uh, in the private sector, some of those are NHS buildings, some of those uh, are schools. And I just think this issue of who is putting the bill for works that are essential um, uh, really needs to be clarified at an early, at an early stage. Um, it is the case, and this statement tells us, that 165 blocks have failed the test. I have not understood why the government is using a measure of 18 metres tall. In other words, it says, and it's in this statement, across England there are 173 social housing buildings that are over 18 metres tall and clad with some form of aluminium composite material. But my lords, I want to challenge the 18 metres. I don't understand why this figure is deemed to be um, uh, important. Um, because we don't want a fire to break out at all, whatever the height of the building. And a number of the NHS buildings, the schools we're talking about, are not 18 metres high. And so I think some clarity about this issue is, uh, is, uh, is, is needed. My final point relates to the private sector. Because I didn't understand the wording of the statement. Since June, we have made the BRE tests available to all private residential building owners. It doesn't say the statement whether that is of high-rise blocks or to any private residential building uh, um, owner. 89 buildings in England, the statement tells us, have tested their cladding, cladding through those facilities. Now, look, how many are there? How many have not been tested? And is it only buildings over 18 metres or is it any uh, uh, kind of private sector accommodation? In which case, the same rules should apply in the public sector. I'd like to echo the Ministers and Lord Kennedy Southwark's comments about the, um, um, the strength of, of the community uh, in Grenfell, particularly the, uh, uh, the pupils in the school and all of those who have been so seriously affected by what has happened and it is incumbent my lords on all of us to do all that we can to help them and as quickly as possible yeah. uh, my, my lords could i first of all thank both the noble lord kennedy and, and the noble lord shipley for their continued support for the general way forward it is uh, important and i'm very grateful for their for their thoughts and for their help not just uh, in the in uh, the house of lords chamber but but elsewhere in looking at these issues, and I think it is absolutely right that we face these issues together. If I could uh, turn to, to look at the points raised by the, the Noble Lords, recognising there is an overlap in some of the points they've raised, I, I echo what the Noble Lord, Lord Kennedy, has said about the terrific work done by our emergency services and generally by the public sector. That's absolutely right, by the faith sector, by the voluntary sector, and indeed by charities. They've, they've done a terrific amount. I, I just met an organisation yesterday, International Students House, on, on another issue and found that they had given some money to a hardship, for a hardship fund for, for students who lived in the area, and that's just, I think, symptomatic of what has been happening in the public response uh, across the board. Uh, the Noble Lord is right. We need, we need to look forward. Uh, housing, we are very much being guided by the principal need, not speed, and so the allocation process may seem slow, but I can certainly confirm that nobody will be forced into accommodation they deem unsuitable at all. That has been the guiding principle, and that's why, in a sense, that perhaps it has been slow. We're determined to carry on that approach. Uh, remedial safety work and the uh, financial issues, I think, raised by both noble lords. Um, we have encouraged, I think would be a, f a fair word to use here, local authorities that do face difficulties to come forward. I think 27 have indicated, uh, I, I will write to Noble Laws, and if these figures are wrong, I don't think they are, but if they are wrong, I'll correct them. 27 have indicated some concern, and six, I think, have, have indicated a, a concern that we're looking at very seriously. So we are certainly looking at that. In terms of financial assistance from the public sector generally, not just in relation to remedial work, but across the piece, uh, over £14 million has been committed uh, in terms of emergency payouts, help on housing, on building safety, and so on. That's in addition, obviously, to any charitable 
uh, donations. I will pick up the point. I'm, I, I will take it away. I'm grateful for the point about ensuring that the charitable money is forthcoming, though I think we would, would want to, as a, as a government, obviously we, we, we don't interfere with uh, the way charities operate, but we are encouraging, certainly, that, that, that all the money doesn't come in one, in one rush. I, mean, I think we need to, to, to facilitate a, a sensible approach on this, and I think that's what we're doing, but I will certainly cover that in any letter. The no, no, both noble lords, I think, referred to the issue of the uh, Ledbury estate in, in Southwark, uh, and so, certainly the, the noble lord, Lord Kennedy, uh, and given his uh, locality, can understand his, his personal interest on this as well. It does also, I think, affect the London Borough of Lewisham, which he's prob probably aware of. I, I've looked at the figures, and the, I think the figures are, and again, I'll take this up in, 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 in a circular letter to noble lords, um, 12 blocks I think we have some real concern about, mostly in London, and then there are another uh, 30 which we're looking at which we're not so concerned about that say they have done the strengthening work and we just want to double check that. And I think there some of those certainly in the London Borough of, bulk of those in the London Borough of Westminster, I think those, those buildings are due to come down anyway. But I will pick that up. It is an issue of concern. The advisory, expert advisory committee is looking at this as well as they are in the, the, the relation to the issue about the wind factor and cladding that's come off. This actually, I think, predates the dreadful Grenfell Tower uh, episode and happened in, in Scotland, so there's obviously a devolved element as, as well there. So, there's, so we're, we're working with Scotland to find out what we can on that, but obviously it has concern throughout the United Kingdom, so we are taking that forward at pace. In relation to the um, other... Uh, government departments, if I can put it that, that way, the other public sector bodies. I think this affects just, just, I'm serious enough, but it affects education and health. It doesn't seem to affect any other government departments. And I, I was double checking that yesterday. Again, I'll pick that up, if I may, in, uh, in, in the letter. In relation to the issue raised about the private sector, uh, the point there, and it is on the same. Uh, point about 18 metres, it is exactly the same uh, cut-off point as it were. Uh, the 18 metres private sector, we haven't made that obligatory, but we've written to local authorities encouraging them to check in their boroughs or in their areas at the, the, the numbers that are concerned, and they have powers to enforce action there. So that is something, and just this week I think the Secretary of State, certainly within the last seven days, the Secretary of State has written to local authorities on, 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 that, on that issue. Um, in relation to the, the point the noble Lord, Lord Shipley also uh, looked at the question of the uh, number of households that have been offered permanent accommodation and so on, it is small, but I, I would remind noble lords, it was in the statement, that there are 21 families that are in housing associations on a temporary basis, and they've asked for that to be made permanent. So that obviously does uh, increase that issue. Uh, the empty dwellings issue the noble lord raised is, is, a, is a wider issue, uh, one that we did, I think, touch on in the white paper, and I know it is concern, of concern. I, again, I'll take that away and, and cover it, if I may, in, in, the, in the letter, but it's a point well made. Um, the, the interplay of the different reviews, the, the Hackett Review, and I thank uh, the lord, noble lord, Lord Shipley, for welcoming this, is due to report an interim report in the autumn of this year and a final report in the spring of next year, but they obviously will be needing to liaise in relation to the police inquiry. We're obviously at arm's length fr from that. It is a matter for the police, and the government won't, for understandable reasons, get directly involved on that, but there is sensitivity on the part of the inquiries to make sure that uh, toes are trodden on and that the, the matters dovetail. The public inquiry um, is having a preliminary meeting, I think, next week on the 14th of September, and they're coming up with the, the uh, I think the, Sir Martin uh, Morbeck has said that he wants to come up with an interim report or preliminary report. I think it's been termed by Easter 18. Uh, the 18 metres high issue is, is contained in planning uh, regulations. The point there being concerned with fire evacuation uh, timings. Obviously there has to be a cut-off point. It's rather gruesome to think of it in these terms, but it, obviously the, the danger is, accelerates as one has higher and higher buildings, and so it's contained in, in, in uh, legislation at the moment, but it will no doubt be something that's looked at by, by both, um, Dame, I suspect, by both Dame Judith and by the public inquiry. It's, it's again, a point well made. Um, 
if I've missed anything else, I will pick it up in, in, the, in the letter I send around. And I'm, I thank Noble Lords for, for, for their continued support. Uh, my Lords, uh, can I first draw the House's attention to the fact that I was a Minister in the Department of Communities and Local Government uh, in the period 2010 to 2012? Uh, can I thank the Noble Minister for the statement and very much welcome the reviews uh, which have been announced and for the way that he's uh, communicated uh, with members of this House about uh, the terrible situation and what has to be done to deal with the aftermath of it. Uh, if I could just pick up uh, two or three points specifically, he mentioned that 89 private tests, or tests of privately owned buildings have been carried out. He didn't give a breakdown of the results of those tests in the same way that he had of the public uh, sector buildings, uh, and I wondered if he was able to do that or if he could undertake to provide us with those as well uh, to give us some idea of the scope of the problem at a national level, not simply at the public sector level. Um, I want to just uh, say to the House that the primary reason that much of this cladding was put on was to improve the uh, energy performance of those buildings. Uh, it wasn't simply decorative or cosmetic. And that implies that where this insulation is being taken off, for very understandable and proper safety reasons, uh, that is leaving residents in those buildings around the country exposed to uh, higher heating bills and uh, less satisfactory living circumstances. We're coming very rapidly to the winter. It's, it's not likely that replacements can be found for this winter. But uh, again, I would just urge the uh, noble minister to uh, give some consideration to how we can find a speedy replacement that's satisfactory and which uh, restores the um, uh, thermal insulation value of the homes which have been stripped off. Uh, and linked to that is a question about the capacity of the industry both to mount a, a major program of uh, stripping this material and also to supply whatever it is that's going to be specified to replace this material in time to uh, reduce or anyway uh, mitigate the exposure of tenants and residents living in these blocks uh, to the worsening conditions that they would otherwise suffer. Uh, th I thank the noble Lord, Lord Stunnell very, very much indeed for that very uh, constructive uh, contribution. Uh, the 89 buildings are, are, all, all have failed. I, I sh should have made that clear if I didn't. I apologise for that. I don't think it said, actually said it in the statement, but they all, they, they all failed. Um, in relation to the energy performance issue that the, the Noble Lord has, has raised, it's, it's a very fair, valid point. Obviously, safety is the prime primacy here, has to be, quite rightly, but uh, he's right about we have Paris uh, climate change commitments which we want to honour, and we would want to make sure that these buildings are um, as energy efficient and as green as possible, and that will be a concern, and we will be raising that with Bayes, which, of course, is, is the ministry where uh, climate change rests these days. But I repeat, safety must, of course be the prime, primacy here. Yeah. The Minister referred to a letter he was sending to the local authorities about their responsibilities with regard to the private sector. Can we see a copy of that letter, please? My, my, my Lord, just, just a minor uh, co correction there. The, the Noble Lord, Lord Campbell Savers, is, is right. I refer to a letter, but it's sent by the Secretary of State. But I will, I will endeavour to ensure that either the letter is circulated or the relevant part of the letter, if it, if it contains other, uh, other matters that are sensitive. But I, I, will, I, I will seek to do that in the circular letter that I'm sending round. My Lord, as a, as, a, as a resident and former councillor in North Kensington, may I join the Noble Lord the Minister, my Noble Friend Lord Kennedy and Lord Shipley, in paying tribute to the resilience and courage of the local community. My question relates to rehousing locally. What is the, do, do residents have a right to be rehoused locally? What does local mean in this context, recognising that Grenfell Tower is fairly close to the north of the borough? So one shouldn't only look at, at North Kensington, uh, that it is close to other boroughs, um, north of the Harrow Road. Clearly there are areas ripe for development uh, along north of the canal. So what does local uh, rehousing mean in this context and is it 
agreed that perhaps uh, those with families, uh, those families with children in school, seem to have a higher right than individuals who may be more mobile. Uh, th thank the, the, the noble Lord, uh, Lord Anderson very much indeed for the usual characteristic constructive uh, approach in, 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 in seeking to address this as, as representatives across, across the board. In relation to the locality issue, uh, that, that what we have said is that we will rehouse affected uh, families from Grenfell, uh, Grenfell Tower and Grenfell Walk either in the borough of Kensington, Chelsea, or in an adjoining borough. So, so we have uh, widened it in, in the way that he suggests. But, of course, I come back to the point that families are able to say that that uh, particular home is, isn't suitable. They will, uh, no doubt, want to, to look at their children's education as a consideration. We have also sought to provide a, a means of saying we're, we're concentrating, first of all, on bereaved families uh, as, 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 as the first uh, set of families that we want to rehouse, but we are obviously uh, taking into account uh, as, as many of the factors that, it, that he's raising as possible to make sure that uh, we deal with needs as they arise. Reply to the front benches. Uh, I did not detect, and I'm sorry if I missed it, a reply to Lord Shipley's point about a broader review of social housing to which the Prime Minister made reference in her July statement. I wonder yeah. if the Minister could say more about that. I thank the noble Lord. I think he's right. I did miss it. It was, it was in my notes to cover. And I certainly can confirm that, uh, first of all, Sir Martin Morbick didn't s seek to make that part of the inquiry for, I think, the very valid reason that it's only right as regards the tenants and the bereaved families and the people, indeed, of, of the estate that we have the focus pretty much laser-like in relation to, to the block. But what the Prime Minister has said is that we will have be looking at the position on social housing. We'll be reviewing that. The Housing Minister is wanting to look at that, is going to be talking to organisations and indeed tenants about this. As you can understand at the moment, he's, he's you know, been under immense pressure in terms of, of, of time and, and emotion uh, in dealing with this issue, but it's very much in the in -trade that we do want to do that. But as it were, it's, a, it's a slightly separate from the issue of, of the Grenfell Tower specifically. My Lords. The noble Lord, Lord Anderson, and I don't want this to be um, thought to be uh, any um, complaint on my part uh, about the quite correct approach of the, um, the government uh, that um, requests and demands about local about housing should be satisfied. Um, people's needs are understood, and they're very special needs in this circumstance. Is the government or, or the local authority keeping um, data on the reasons for rejection of offers of housing? Because I think that that might fight, feed into further consideration of demands for and requirements uh, for, for, um, uh, for social housing. I was um, quite struck by the um, very localised um, uh, views of, of a number of the displaced tenants who've, who see their own community as being very narrow and not, do not want to go over the border to Westminster, even though geographically it's very close. They felt it was a very different community. My second question, quite differently, is, is about the inquiry. There has been a lot of feeling locally about the need for diversity um, in, uh, among those who, as they see it, are in charge of the inquiry. Um, I heard Sir Martin Morbick make the point very clearly and correctly that there is, was no panel at the point when he was accused of having a panel which was not representative. But I wonder whether the, uh, the no noble lord can tell the House about any progress towards the construction of the inquiry, maybe a panel, maybe assessors to assist the chair and so on. Th thank the, the noble lady for that, for, the, for those two questions. Um, I assume, though I don't know, but I will certainly raise this with the Royal Borough, that 
that they are retaining data about the reasons for turning down. That seems very constructive that they should do that. I, I, I'm sure that records are being kept. As we know, some common reasons that people perhaps only want to move once rather than move twice, um, the trauma associated with, with moving and so on. So you can understand people wanting to take some time. But I will look at that issue because I, I think that's abs absolutely right. In relation to Sir Martin Morbick and the public inquiry and the diversity issue, um, it is, it's, it's a matter for, for Sir Martin, but certainly we're very open to the issue of assessors. We would, would you know, go so far as to encourage it. I, I, I don't want to steal any thunder from the public inquiry. And indeed, I don't know what specifically he'll have to say about it, but I'm sure that something will be said at the first preliminary meeting a week on Thursday on the 14th. <clears throat> My Lord, uh, like uh, the Noble Lord, Lord Anderson, I must declare an interest as a resident of the borough and indeed have a connection with the council in that my wife is a councillor and was a cabinet member with responsibility for schools at the time of this appalling fire. Uh, may I welcome what uh, the noble lord has said about rehousing uh, and how immensely complex this process is uh, and how rightly he says that it should not be a question of simply getting numbers for the dispatch box but making sure that all individuals have their needs satisfactorily addressed and they will be complex and very different. It's going to be extremely expensive, of course. Perhaps he can tell the House whether the government is assisting with the cost of the extremely uh, significant cost of rehousing in any way and in what respect. And secondly, so far as Sir Martin Morbick is concerned, uh, can he confirm that despite the unfortunate criticism of the appointment and the suitability of uh, Sir Martin for discharging the duty. He has the full confidence of the government and those who are familiar with his work uh, have every reason to believe that he will perform his job with extreme diligence and a satisfactory outcome. I thank my noble friend very much indeed and perhaps dealing with the second question first because it's, it's more straightforward and, and simpler response. He has the total support of the government. We have every reason to suppose uh, and already is a tackling it, uh, these issues at pace, that he is the right man for the job. And uh, we look forward to the work that he's going to put in on this immensely challenging uh, inquiry. In relation to the issue about uh, the complex process that he referred to of rehousing and so on on the costs, of course, uh, much of this will be picked up. Um, hotel accommodation, for example, will be picked up under the Bellwin formula, I think. But as I, I indicate, indicated earlier, in relation to specific Request the government is looking at requests made by local authorities in relation to the issue more widely in relation to Kensington and Chelsea. As I say, a lot of this will be picked up uh, by the Bellwin uh, formula. But the Royal Bar I think a corner has been turned, it's right to say. I think now people are understandably looking much more to the future, and I think some progress is being made on what is a, a horrendous situation. But I think people now are understandably looking, looking to the future, although obviously in very, very difficult circumstances. <coughs> 